Good evening, everyone. It's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. Gosh, I've missed you. I feel like it's been forever since we've been together. I'm so excited to be here tonight, and I'm so excited to craft with you. We are going to do something really fun and maybe a little bit different than something that you've tried in the past. Um, we are going to actually do some silhouette stenciling. Now you guys know that I am crazy for silhouette stamping. I love to do ink blending and then stamp those silhouette images on top. But you can do something very similar with stencils and get a very similar look. And it might even be a little easier for some of you that are just getting started. Because sometimes those clear stamps have to be stamped a few times to get them nice and black with that black ink and uh, stencils perfect every time. So that's what we're going to do tonight. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Silhouette, silhouette, silhouette. You remember that song? I do remember that song. <laughs> Boy, that was a long time ago. You look like a lumberjack tonight. Do I? Yes. <laughs> lumberjack. <laughs> Are you lumbering over there, Jack? I am lumbering today. <laughs> over there in the dead space? <laughs> it's Tuesday. It feels like Monday. Why? Uh, it's Yeah. Well, you know, all day I thought it was Thursday. So imagine my disappointment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought we were heading into the weekend. Yeah. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> Crafters out there. Glad you're with us tonight for another uh, another stamp and chat. Yeah. So, um, OK, silhouettes. Um, you bet, whoop, hot rodders are out today. Hot rodders are out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, silhouette stamping um, and silhouette stenciling. Now, I've never done silhouette stenciling on my YouTube channel before, so I'm kind of excited about it. And I feel like the new... Um, uh, create friendship stencils, the new bundle that's out. I feel like it's perfect for this technique because it'll make it really easy. Wow. And you didn't rehearse anything at all, right? No, I rehearsed nothing. Wow. So we're so just going to see where it goes. <laughs> it's always terrifying. It is. All right. Well, how about if I get started? Because you just right. never know how long it's going to take. So tonight for silhouette stenciling, you're going to start with some white cardstock. And I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Layering Weight White. It is super smooth and great for stenciling, of course, and great for ink blending. So I have a quarter sheet here of cardstock, and I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. I'm going to trim it down to... Should I do the three and a half? I have to look at this and just see what it would look like. I'm going to go three and three quarters by five. Now you could cut that with master layouts one if you have that master layout set. And then I'm going to take a look at this and see how this looks together. I have too many stencils here, but I want to see how this looks together. I think this is going to work out pretty well. I'm holding it up a little bit to the light so I can see through it. And I think this size is going to work well. We might be able to get a second one in tonight. We'll see, because this is not a very difficult technique, but it sure is beautiful. And it really allows you to have some fun with your inks. So you can do this in a couple of different ways, what I'm going to do. Now, I'm thinking either you can use masking magic strips or you can use the masking magic sheets. You can actually use masking mag magic sheets to cut a rectangle or a, an oval or something like that. So maybe we'll do that one with the second card. With the first card, I'm inclined to use masking magic strips. Now, I want to show you something else. You, instead of actually cutting out and trying to measure and getting this thing even on both sides, you can use one of the masking magic strips in the half inch size, because these are all cut at half inches, and you can mask off two ends of your cardstock. So I'm going to mask off the bottom here like this, and then this also helps because it tax the cardstock down onto your cardstock. So that's why this cardstock onto your work surface, I should stay, say, I'm working on a piece of cardstock here. So I have a second one here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. All right. And I do want to make sure that I've got that whole edge covered. And I do. Now that gives me a perfect border on this side. But what if I want to move this whole thing up a little bit? Well, 
another half inch strip might just be too much, just bringing it in a little bit too much, but maybe not. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to add this and just do a, the slightest overlap. I can almost see the overlap here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now, remember, you can reuse the Masking Magic strips a few times. And if you do, just try to stay to that same color scheme. Okay, so now I've brought my mask in just a little bit. And I think that's going to give me a great area here. Now, if you are really particular, you can also mask off these two sides. But I think I'm going to just leave those sides open. Now, if you look at this and you go, you know, that's just too much. I don't want to go in quite that far. These Masking Magic strips can be put back onto the sheet so you can reuse them. And then we could go in just a little bit by instead of using a half inch sheet, which is what I think I'm going to do, a half inch strip, we can go down to the quarter inch strip size because there are three different strip sizes in here. You've got the one eighth of an inch, which has the blue backing. You've got the quarter inch, which has the red backing and the half inch, which has the green backing. So instead of doing that second half inch, let's go with a quarter inch on each side. Early question here. Yes. So Joanne would like to know, Gina, do you ever uh, do scrapbooking? And were you ever on a TV show scrapbooking with Sandy Genovese? I was never on that show. And I've done a tiny bit of scrapbooking on my own just for fun. But um, I may have like shared a six by six page every now and then in a video, but not really. I don't do a whole lot of scrapbooking and I would love to do more scrapbooking because I do enjoy it when I do it on those rare occasions. Um, I just don't do it very much because I'm so into cards and cards are like little scrapbook pages and they feel so like it's so easy to complete something in one sitting. So that's why I kind of lean towards card making. Um, but I should get back into that. I really should. All right, so I'm going to create the look of a sky, and I think I'm going to lean on one of my favorite color combinations for a sky, which is peach bellini and then bubblegum pink, and then a little wild lilac and some turquoise sea. So let me find my turquoise sea that was left out over here somewhere. I'll just grab this one. Okay. So I'm going to start with turquoise C down here in the corner. Now you can see the way I masked that off, right? So we're all on the same page there. A lot of people have kind of come over to the card making side from scrapbooking. And I do think that there are some people who start with card making and they think, hey, I think I would like to get into some scrapbooking and maybe they do small books, things like that. But uh, I, it is really fun. I do like scrapbooking. I'm not saying I don't like it. I just haven't made a lot of time for it. Okay, so I'm going to do just a little corner thing here in this turquoise sea. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to move up to some wild lilac. And I think I have wild lilac on this brush already. So I'm not going to really load any color on here because I don't want this to be real heavy. So I'm going to see what's on the brush and just work that lightly into that turquoise sea. You see, that's a pretty light color and that's kind of what I want. And I like the way that's kind of blending right there. It's giving me a little bit of a wisteria look. Love wisteria. We have a wild wisteria color, but it's fun to kind of create that shading. All right, now I'm going to go for a little bit of bubblegum pink. I'm not going to go not going to go much more onto this side. I'm just going to bring this pink 
down this way a little bit into that same spot. I don't want to go over too much because I still want to have that little bit of a, a margin there. And then I'm going to finish it off with some peach bellini. And I know I always talk about only needing 10 brushes, but I do have a dedicated peach bellini brush just because it's one of my favorite colors and I don't want it to be too orange and I don't want it to be too, um, too pink. So I'm just going to do that. All right. That's the extent of my ink blending. I don't know if I'm going to like this part right here. So I might add a little pink into that. Now I'm going to peel that masking magic off. And I should have a nice crisp line on that one side. See that? Isn't that pretty? I like the way that looks. Just kind of a little bit going in there. It doesn't go all the way to the edge. And this is just more of a partial ink blending look. And now I'm going to get my black, my black ink pad, and I'm going to start to do a little silhouette on here. So I want to make sure that I've got these stencils facing in the right direction. You can always tell by the name at the bottom. And I'm going to make this go a little bit outside. And then I'm going to lay this on top and see where this ends up going. Yeah, that's going to look good. We can actually go off the cardstock a little bit. So why don't we do that? And you can kind of put the stencils together and see where they fall. I want to have the whole thing kind of go off the side there. So I'm going to start with this one. And I am going to see this butterfly right here. I'm definitely going to mask that off. So I can even use one of these masking magic strips. I just tore a little piece off and just block that off so that I don't make a mess there and get some black ink. Because black ink, I don't care. You don't even have to be on the same card and it seems to get in places that you don't want it to be. So I'm going to put a little pixie tape down. I think for a sunrise and a sunset, for a sunrise, I almost like what I just did now, kind of the little bit of darker near the bottom, even though that doesn't really make sense. I don't know, the sky feels a little bit more sunrisey this way. For a sunset, I definitely would reverse it and get those oranges real deep and low. And then as you get more to the top, bring in like blue denim or in the navy to really darken the sky at the top. Okay, so we're going to start with some black onyx ink here. And I'm going to go right over the centers of these flowers. Now this can be a little bit messy on your stencil, so you want to have a good stamp cleaner. And I'll show you how the Gina K Design Stamp Cleaner does get most of this black off. I'll show you what happens if you don't use the stamp cleaner. Ooh, you know what? I am not, remember what I just said about black ink? Uh-uh. I got to protect that right there. Okay. Now I feel better. All it takes is those little bristles to just dust over the edge to kind of ruin it. So I'm not worried about that star too much, that little star flower there, that center because the other flower is just going to go right on top of it, but it's a silhouette. But I am going to fill it in a little bit just to make sure that things are positioned properly. That'll help me a little bit being able to see that. Okay, so I think that's good. I might go back with a second layer just to make sure it's dark enough. But you can see something like this really makes it easy rather than stamping if you want a silhouette look. All right, let's pull this up and see what we have. Oh, that is pretty. Okay, now we're going to do round two, and I'm going to line that up. Let's see here. Here's the little collar of that bud. So I'm going to put that right there, and everything else should fall into place. That looks very good. 
going to put a little space in between there. I'm not going to butt it right up against there, just a tiny little space. And once again, I think I just moved it. So I want to move it down again. There we go. And once again, for this, I can use another little strip of that masking magic just to cover that up and get my post-it note up here to protect that. Okay, so once again, I'm going back to the black. Here we go. Are you using amalgam ink? No, I'm using black onyx dye ink. And I always use black onyx dye ink when I'm doing something like this because amalgam ink doesn't dry as quickly. And black onyx dye ink is going to dry very quickly. And that's really important because it's real easy to smear, especially when you're putting another stencil right on top right away. It's a water-based ink. It's going to be a little easier to clean off the stencil. So I'd highly recommend using black onyx dye ink for this. And there are no registration marks on the stencils. Is that correct? Right. But they do butt up against each other and line up. So if you wanted to do this in your Misty and line it up in the corner of your Misty, then you don't have to worry about figuring out where to line them up, if that makes sense. Okay. So there's layer two. That's looking pretty cool, huh? And then we're gonna do our final layer, layer three. Oh, I just dropped that. Let me grab that. Okay. And we'll add these details. Now remember, you're not even gonna see the centers of these flowers, but that's all right, because we're going for um, solid. And then, as you can see, I've got a lot going on here with this butterfly, so I need to protect that. So I'm using post-it notes for that, although you certainly can go back to your Masking Magic strips and just use those pieces up. And then right up here, I could use the Masking Magic, I think. There we go. I think I got it. All right, and then I'm gonna add these last little details. And Colleen asks, which is the best black ink when working with alcohol markers? Uh, you can use either amalgam or you can use the Gina K Designs dye ink. If you use um, the amalgam ink, then definitely heat set it a little bit because we are finding that if you live in a little bit more of a humid climate, or if it happens to be humid that day, it might smear a little bit if you don't heat set it. I use the dye ink when I use Copic markers just because it dries so fast. Amalgam ink, you can watercolor with. You cannot watercolor with our dye ink because dye ink is water-based. So how do you like that? That's kind of pretty, huh? With that little bit of color behind there. So I could trim this down a little bit more if I wanted to, and I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to trim it down on this side. I feel like it's a little heavy on that side, and I'm going to take this whole thing down to three and a half inches. By four and three quarters of an inch. So I'm trimming top and bottom so that I'm keeping those borders consistent over here. And I feel like that just makes it feel a little better to me. Okay. So now I'm going to add a greeting to this. And you could add a strip sentiment. I know I have them around here somewhere. I have a whole cup of them cut out. Just have a bunch of them here. But you could definitely add a strip sentiment to this if you wanted. Something like that. Or we could stamp something up here. Now, although I love the greetings in this set, I feel like something this heavy would look better with a more delicate greeting. So I think I'm gonna pull out the Radiant Roses set. So let me find that. I have it right down here. 
You see how the Radiant Roses greetings are so delicate? I feel like that combination is really nice together. So I think I'm going to do something like that. And I'll show you what I mean. If I were going to use the stamp set that comes in this bundle, I'd have to do one of these really small ones. Like, um, let's see. Yeah, see, I feel like I feel like all of this is big, and it's kind of well. That's not bad. That's not bad. What do you think of that, guys? That friend in there. Maybe we could just do. Um, Let's see. Best friend. That might work. All right, let's stick with it. Let's stick with the one stamp set, the one bundle. Since we have it here, <laughs> we'll stick with it. Okay. Yes, our strip sentiments can be foiled. Uh, they are printed with a toner, so you can foil them. All right. I feel like that one is the only one that would make it though. And if you still agree that you would like a thinner sentiment, I, I feel you. I mean, I, I definitely think that a, a thinner sentiment would look really good here, but it is kind of nice. I don't have a hello in here. I'm, I don't think so. Hello, friend. Oh, I do right there. I do have a hello. Yes. Hello, friend would be good. I like that. Good, good thinking. Okay. So we'll get that right in there. And I'm gonna stamp this on the acetate from the stamp set first to see if I really like it. So if you've never done that before, and I know a lot of you are my regular friends that join me on Tuesday night, so you've seen me do this, but this is the back sheet from that bundle, from that stamp set. And I just laid that on top. So when I ink it up, and stamp it. I'm only going to stamp on the acetate. If it doesn't look good, I can change my mind, but I can at least get an idea of what that's going to look like. I think it looks good. Does it look straight or does it look like it's going uphill a little bit? I don't know. I feel like it might look like it's going uphill just a hair. It could be me though. No, it kind of looks good. Maybe in the screen it looks weird because of the angle of the camera. I think it looks okay. All right, so we're gonna do this. We'll get the friend in there first because that's the right spot for the friend and then we'll add the hello later. And we'll add it right after. It is fun if you have this bundle to be able to see how to kind of use the whole bundle. You see, I'm doing it very lightly. I'm gonna go back and do it again because there's some really delicate lines in this word and I don't wanna squish them and distort them. So Polly wants to know, do you typically leave the inside of the card blank? You know, I tend to leave the inside of my cards blank. I don't know if it's because I'm lazy. Um, I always write something inside and I do tend to line the card. So I will do another white panel and a black layer and pop it in there so that it's got a little frame. But if I don't know what to write, then I will use an inside greeting set but a lot of times I do leave it blank. Especially on these friend kind of cards, I really do love the um, like the birthday sentiments and the thank you sentiments that we have. I do really enjoy using those. But when it's for a friend, I kind of like to leave it blank so that I can write something personal. Yeah, that is a little bigger than I expected too, but I think it's gonna work. So we'll put the hello right there. Oh, and did I tell you guys the tip? So if you're trying to place these stamps and they're sticking to your fingers, take a little embossing magic pad and pat it on your fingers. And then the stamp doesn't stick to your fingers as much, which I think is kind of cool. Now, I think maybe we should look at this too and make sure that this looks straight. But I really do love to see when um, people decorate the insides of the cards. I do think it looks really beautiful. And Debbie Warner has such nice inside greetings and she actually has small versions of some of her bigger stamp sets in there, which really, okay, I like that. Hello, friend, that's very cute. 
that looks really cute. Do you guys like that? I think that'll look nice. Maybe we'll do a different one on the next, the next card. So let's go ahead and stamp that. I'm using an ink cube now. I grabbed my black ink cube just because I feel like I have a little more control when I'm doing greetings with the ink cube. It's making me nervous not to have the magnet on there. And I feel like we could put just a couple little gems on here too. So I think that looks really cute. And that's really, you know, you don't have to think, oh, what color combination am I going to do with this stencil today? You just let that little bit of a background show through for color and just do everything in black. And it's just, just more of a dramatic kind of look. I think it's really nice, too. This would be a very nice look for a sympathy card because it has the black in there, which is a little more somber, and then you can do the soft tones. So I'm just gonna put my blending brushes back if you give me a minute here so I don't make a mess because so that could happen. Okay. Now I'm going to add a black panel to this because I add a black panel to everything. And we're gonna pick a card base color. Now, my first inkling is to go with like a blue card base, like a turquoise C card base, only because I feel like that has the tiniest little bit of color there, and I really want to see more of that. But then I also think it's really striking to just do a white card base. So let's take a look and see what that turquoise C looks like, or maybe even go a little lighter than turquoise C, something like sea glass or ocean mist, and see how that looks. All right, I'm going to tape these two panels together. And I just want to take a moment to say welcome to everyone. It is great to see all of you here. This one, oh no, what happened? This one's got something on it. I've got to fix. I will fix it later and I'll just replace it right now. Sea glass, you think? Yeah, I think maybe sea glass might be the ticket for it. We'll see. So Dolores would like to know, uh, can Gina show us how she holds the tape runner? I oh, always yes. have trouble with my tape runner. So when you hold the tape runner, you want to hold it so that it's a little tilted forward. So I think what happens is people like hold it back too much. Let's see if this is the paper, they hold it like back too much and you want to tip your hand forward a little bit when you use it. Otherwise, if you don't tip your hand forward a little bit, not all of the dots release and then they get caught up on the other part and it can make the tape runner stop working. So I naturally do that, but if you don't naturally do that, it takes like a minute to get used to doing it. Okay, I like that. Got something there. And then I'm going to show you how to clean this stencil, and then we'll make one more. So um, let's try the sea glass. I think sea glass is going to look really pretty with this. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. It's lighter than turquoise sea, but because we did ink blending and we did such a pale, light hand kind of looks a little like turquoise sea. So I'm going to get my big paper cutter here so I can do the four and a quarter mark by 11. And then I need to score that at the five inch mark. So today I went to a dermatologist and I haven't been to a dermatologist in 20 years. And let me tell you, I chose to go to a woman, <laughs> which was a good thing because she did a body mapping. And that is not a very comfortable thing to do. But she was so nice. And she actually found a couple things that she removed today. But I don't think they're anything serious. I think they're like skin tags. <laughs> 
So, boy, if somebody's brand new and they just tuned in <laughs> and they don't know me, <laughs> they're going to unsubscribe, click, get out. <laughs> okay. Why do I always do top fold instead of side fold? You know why? Because they sit up so nicely on a shelf like this. It's so easy. They sit up like an easel and they're, they look so nice when they're sitting up. So that's why I tend to do this. And also they're much easier to photograph like that. Okay. Did I, was I TMI? I'm sorry if I was too much information. <laughs> Body mapping is not fun, but it's necessary. Um, so yeah, that, that was my day. Had a few things taken off. We'll do one more down there. Okay, so I'm going to use my disco ball sequins because you know they're my favorite, and especially in a card like this where we're not trying to really take away from the main focal part of that card, but we want to have a little shimmer in there. It's important to get it done, I guess, right? She asked me if I wore sunscreen, and I told her I did, but I think some of you are going to relate to this. I told her she was young. And I told her I came from an era where my mom used to say to me, and just tell me if any of you experienced this growing up. My mom used to say to me, you know, get out and get some sun. What did I just do? Go out and get some sun. And then she would give me baby oil and she would tell me to put iodine in it so that it would work even faster and better. Did anybody out there put iodine in your baby oil? to get even like darker tan, like my mom made me do. <laughs> she didn't make me, but yeah, she kind of did, you know? She was like, you want to look good. You want to get a nice tan. So you need to put baby oil and iodine in there. So, right? That's crazy. Today, you know, I'm out there with like a 50 sunscreen everywhere because I don't, I don't want anything to happen. Um, and she asked me, did you, did you ever get a bad burn? I'm like, yes, every weekend. What are you talking about? <laughs> so it's probably good that I got mapped. All right. Yes. Hawaiian Tropic. Yeah. That oil. So you were like actually sizzling out there. Yep. That's my era too. Okay. So there's my first card. So now we'll do one. Um, we'll do an oval. And I think we'll cut that out of masking magic here. Okay, we'll get a piece of masking magic. I'm glad you use a 70 sunscreen. That's good. I mean, now I'm using a big sun. I'm, I'm Italian. So I do, I am a little bit lucky because I do tend to tan and not burn, but I'll still burn if I'm out there too long. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, it doesn't matter how melanated you are. Your skin will burn if you're out there for a long time. So it's important. Wear your sunscreen. Summer's coming up here in the U.S. Wear your sunscreen. Stay safe. Okay, now before we do this, I want to show you um, what I was talking about with this stencil. So when you're cleaning this stencil, you can use water, you can use the tidy towel, you can use whatever you want to clean off the initial ink. So I'll use a little water first. Let's just get some water on there. And I'll just clean that off and you'll see it leaves kind of a purple hue behind because that's what the black ink does. It leaves a purple hue. So if you want to get rid of that purple hue, then I suggest Gina K Designs Stamp Cleaner. The last batch we got, they tinted blue. We were trying to go for aqua, uh, so we kept the blue. But if you use a little bit of this, it will really clean all of that off. You see how it's just coming right off? See, it got all of that purple off. So I like to do that to get all of the stains off. And then I go back over it with either a little soapy water, or if I'm not in my near a sink, then you can also just use like a little bit of Windex, something that's going to just dry up a little bit of oily residue that's left behind from the stamp cleaner. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. And you can see that that stencil looks pretty new, right? So I wanted to show that to you because I know some of you have stencils that are stained with red or with black and um, the Gina K Designs Stamp Cleaner will take care of that for you. Okay, what size are the Masking Magic Sheets? So the Masking Magic Sheets are five by seven, five by seven inch sheets. And then because I always cut my cardstock down, I just cut these in half when I'm doing this technique to three and a half by five. And then I cut my cardstock to three and a half inches. And I have enough here to do two cards, if that makes sense. You can always put a little strip down the side if you need to, or you can, um, you could just use a post-it note if you're worried about it not going all the way to the edge. So let me get a piece of cardstock here. And we're going to cut that down to three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch. And that's going to be the size that I'm going to use for this card. And then I'm going to cut this out with a shape die. So I think I'm going to use one of our, um, got to find them. I didn't think I was going to do this. So just give me a second to find them. I'm going to use, why do I have two sets of circles? Can somebody explain to me why I have that? Probably because I lost one set and I took another one. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this out using one of these dies. Now, depending on how much space you want, you can either cut with a big die or you can cut with a smaller die. And if you cut with a smaller die, then you can either stamp or stencil outside of this. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go just a little bit smaller. Any collapse coming up? I don't have any collapse coming up right now. No. Oh, I, uh, actually Jennifer and I, Jennifer McGuire and I were supposed to be hanging out this weekend in person, but our plans fell through and, um, I was really hoping that she'd be here because we would have been able to do this video together, but another time we had to cancel some stuff going on. And you guys know that I have my daughter's dogs, which is quite fun. <laughs> I've learned that I am definitely a dog person, but I'm definitely enjoying my freedom. So I like being a dog grandma more than I like being a dog mommy right now, if that makes sense. So I'm cutting this oval out of the uh, masking magic and you can use the one that you cut out for masking off a circle later or, or an oval later where you actually put the oval down and you ink blend color around it and leave an open oval in the center so we'll keep that for that so you don't really waste that okay yeah being a dog grandma has perks because I get to spoil them, right? I've got Rena's dog and her boyfriend's dog because they went to the Philippines. And I get to spoil those doggies. And then I get to give them back when they're all spoiled. And I get to have fun with them. They're so cuddly and they sleep in the bed with me. And they're not being abused at all, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I am both a dog person and a cat person. I uh, became a cat person when my daughter Alicia got her cat. She has a beautiful black cat. And the cat stayed with me for a little while while she was traveling and I fell in love with the cat. So now I'm both, I'm a dog mommy or a dog lover and a cat lover. So I'm going to go a little down on this piece of cardstock, a little bit over the edge there. And then I'm going to lightly roll that masking magic on. Okay. Now, don't worry if it doesn't look exactly perfect. Like you see how it's just a little bit off here on the one side. Don't worry about that. You're hardly going to notice that. You're not going to notice it. But what I am going to do to protect it is I'm going to go back to my post-it notes and I'm going to just protect the edge here. 
So what if we use that same, oh yeah, Kathy Z, you've got Franklin, so you're a cat grandma. I totally get it. I love, the cat is so easy to take care of because you don't have to walk it, you know, it feeds itself, it walks itself, and it decides when it wants you. It doesn't always want you the way the doggies do, but you know, they're both wonderful. So now we were talking a little bit earlier about doing more of a, like a sunset. So I think I'm going to do that same color combination, but in reverse and add just a tiny bit of a darker blue, which I like blue denim for this to add a little blue denim at the top. Okay. So let's go with the peach Bellini and we're going to start that down here at the bottom. I don't know where my ink stand went. Everything gets piled up over here. Okay, we'll start with the peach Bellini. Okay. And now this, I'm just gonna do this right along the bottom here. And then I'll tell you what else I'm gonna do. Because we're doing a sunset, I am going to add a little bit of a brighter orange right down near the bottom. So this is my orange brush. I don't know what's on here. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of tangerine twist, just a little bit right down here at the bottom, just to make it a little more glowy. Now it might not look like much now, but I think when I take this masking magic off, you'll notice that little bit of a glow down there at the bottom. And then we'll go back and we'll add a little more peach up here. All right, and now we're gonna go to bubble gum again. I put all the brushes away only to take them all out again. <laughs> And we'll go across this way, right over that same color, right in there. Okay. It always looks like a hot mess before you take the masking magic off. And then masking magic is such a miraculous thing that it somehow looks great. Okay, so again, before I add any purple to this, <clears throat> I am just going to see what's on the brush. See, because there's not a lot on that brush, but it's enough. See how that's enough? I don't need it to be real dark purple. So sometimes when I'm doing these kinds of really soft skies, I won't re-ink my brush. I almost brush off everything on a paper towel that's left on there because I really don't want a lot of color. It is a lot of color, but I don't want it to be heavy, dark color. And now I'm going with the turquoise C at the top. I did ink up my brush for that because I feel like I needed a little more. And now to create that little bit of nighttime look, we're going to add this blue denim up around the top. So I do have a blue brush. And I'm going to just lightly bring that in. I'm going to bring it in kind of in a curve. So I'm curving it all around. And see how the sky now is getting to look a little bit darker, a little bit more like evening is happening up near the top there. I'm not trying to get it on there all at once. And then I can go back with that turquoise C and I can bring that in here a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna bring it down a little more into that pink. Okay, so I think that's gonna look good. I think that's gonna be enough. Now we're gonna get rid of all of this. And then we're gonna peel. This is always the most fun part because honestly, I do feel like that looks like a hot mess. <laughs> but when we take this off, make sure there's nothing on my thumbs. Look how much smoother it looks. Doesn't that look beautiful? 
And if you want to save this and reuse it, just use the same color combination. And to save it, just find your little package of masking magic wherever it went. It's somewhere on your desk. You know it is. These are the strips, but same thing. And just place it right on there and, you know, just stick it to that. It'll be fine. And you can use it again and again. The reveal is always amazing. Okay. So now, Tom, they're asking if you have a word of the day. Oh, and wow. While you're talking about that, I'm going to look through my stencils here to decide if there's something here that I want to use. Okay, so <laughs> uh, so we're getting a little fancy here today. Um, the word of the day is 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 plurale tantum. Ooh, plurale tantum. I know what that means. You do. I do. How did you know that? I I saw it somewhere. I was plurale probably looking up words. <laughs> so that's Latin, and it means plural only, and it's a grammar thing in English grammar, and it's kind of annoying. What does it mean? Plural only, right? Plural only. Yeah. So it's words that um, it's a noun that appears only in the plural form and doesn't have a singular variant, like, for example, scissors. Or Oh, right, because it's a scissors. Jeans, glasses, um, trousers, um, you know, those kinds of things. And I, pants, although I saw... I saw a um, an online clothing store that had pant. Oh, like, like a... you go through the pants, and each one would say pant. And oh, like a new uh, capri pant that's a pant. out on that. That's yeah, wrong. A pant. I mean, can you see that? No. Me out in a pant. Walking the dog in a pant. In a pant. <laughs> No, I can't see that. <laughs> it's like one leg. <laughs> I think there'd be a few phone calls made. Yeah, so um, it's kind of like like is a contact lens just one side? Is it a lens? Now it's I've heard you. Yeah, that, that's I've heard you say that. That's <laughs> my one lens is bothering me. <laughs> I don't know if that's the same thing. That's or a like, pantyhoe. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's your creation. I think you're you're going off the rails a little bit. But. <laughs> Not a pair of pantyhose, just the one side. If you get a runner, it's just in the one hoe, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so for what that's all worth, that's the word of the day. Okay, that's great. Back in the dead space. I feel like this is going to be too dark. I feel like this stencil thing is going to just be too... <laughs> I feel like I want to stamp something more delicate on these. Would you guys mind? We already went through the technique of, of silhouette stenciling. Can I do one stamp? I think they won't mind. I feel like I got to get something. Let me find it. Got to find a silhouette set. Yeah, like something like this. I feel like it needs something more delicate. Don't you guys feel like something more delicate? <laughs> Anyhow, um, contact lens. There's got to be other things like that, right, Tom? Um, let's see. There must be. Just Google that. I want to know what other words are like that. Pliers. Pliers, yeah. A plier. But uh, that doesn't even sound wrong. A plier. Does it? <laughs> Goods, clothes. Congratulations. Congratulation. Yeah, well, if you're just wishing it and what is a gro what 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 is a grocery? <laughs> a grocery? Yeah. Is that a store? No. Grocery a store is a grocery store. Oh. What yeah. is a grocery? Nothing. It's groceries. You have to get groceries. Even if you go and you buy one dozen eggs. I told you it was annoying. <laughs> it is annoying. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we go back with, I don't like the stamp set that I picked. So I need you to talk for a minute so I can find the stamp set that I want to use. <laughs> okay. So the examples are rolling in. Winnie said sheep and Rick said sheep. Oh, yeah. 
sheet. Oh, yeah, that's boy. one of those. Okay, this is the set I was looking for. I really love this Autumn Silhouettes stamp set. And I feel like this one over that oval is going to look perfect. So oh, Pam has a good one. Suds. There's never a sud. Well, I've had... I bought shampoo that did not work very well. If and have... I would consider that a sud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's So a sud is like a, um, a defective... Yeah, suds. when you don't get enough suds. Can you silhouette stencil in a different color for bold images? You know, Catherine, you probably could use like a in the navy or a really dark brown for like autumn cards, like charcoal brown if you had like an autumn blend. But I'll tell you, I've done it a couple times and I still prefer the look of um, black. For silhouettes. I, I don't know what it is, but the black always does it for me. So I'm just going to go a couple layers of this. Well, See, I like that. That I feel like that it has this one had to be a little bit skinnier. And I probably could have gone through and found a stencil that would have worked, but I really wanted to show you the technique. But for this one, I wanted to show you the cutting it out with a shape and kind of getting that sunset look. So I think we got a little of everything tonight. Sud. We're all over the place here. <laughs> Sud. Dentures? Yeah, one denture. He had just one tooth left in your mouth. <laughs> they the words just are become really funny when you make them when you take the S off the end. I love that. Len. I love that. Yeah, contact Len. My one Len. Oh, okay. Well, that was a belly laugh. We had a good belly laugh tonight. <laughs> that was a great little segment that you had there, though, Tom. I like that. So what do you guys think of this? Isn't that pretty? See, I'm still making cards. We're going off track, but I'm, I'm still working here. I'm still making cards. I love that. And it's just a totally different, you know, feel because it's so delicate. And that just works really well with all that extra color. Where this one, the color is a little bit more subtle. And then we got to stencil. So two different options here. So let's throw this on a black card base. And we'll use that same... Um, same sea glass, and we'll make this a set, a set of two. And we're going to give them away tonight. So Tom's going to have to. The stamp set was Autumn Silhouettes. That's what that stamp set was. I really like that one. It's one of my favorites. That's one thing. If you guys are new to Gina K Designs, don't ever think just because something, you know, we're on to a new release that I'm not going to bring out the old sets because... I love every stamp set that we come up with and I keep bringing them back. They just, they don't die. <laughs> I keep bringing them back. Sometimes I think those of you that have been with me forever are like, oh my gosh, that set again. I'm so tired of it. But some of them you just can't help but, but love. And this is just one of those for me. So let me score this card base. This was the other half of that piece of card stock. So is a kick in the pant, like, <laughs> not as bad as a kick in the pants? I don't know. Maybe we can try it later and you can let me know. <laughs> Where do you aim if you're if you're doing a kick in the pant? <laughs> I guess it's just one leg. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, this card definitely lends itself to a very small strip sentiment that you would stamp right underneath here or a strip sentiment like this, I think. So birthday wishes might be a nice one to just add right in the center there. And I think that's what I'm going to do, even though it does cover a little bit of that beautiful sunset. I'm going to add it in there because I think that'll work really well. So before I commit, I got to just lay it down and then I got to shift it. Once I feel like it's centered, then we'll commit. And this one, I'm not going to put any sequins on because I do think that that is really pretty and just simple. So silhouette stamping, you know, 
that's a great technique. Silhouette stenciling is super fun and it's a way to stretch some of your more delicate silhouette stencils like this one. I probably could have, you know, I probably could have done and I didn't think of it until right now. I could have used that curved floral stencil right around that oval. That would have been really nice from our um, curved floral bundle that we had last month. That would have been a great one. So if you have that one, give that one a try around an oval. I think that would be beautiful. But these are the two finished cards tonight. Tom, we were on a roll tonight. I am, I'm still kind of belly laughing. That's kind of funny. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we're just really full of it here tonight. <laughs> We are. So, okay. Yes, a curved sentiment would be great too. You could do something like that around the bottom or around the top. Great ideas. I love reading all your ideas. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to give these cards away tonight. So let's start with the stenciled one. And that's the one that has those little sequins on there, the Hello Friend one. Who gets this one tonight? Cheesy drum roll, please. All right. <laughs> Hello Friend goes to Linda Gorman. Linda, Linda Gorman. Linda, yay, Linda. All right. I know Linda. Congratulations, Linda. Okay. And then the stamped silhouette card. Who gets this one? Stamped silhouette is going right out the door to Sherry Keys. Hey, Sherry, Sherry Keys. congratulations. Keys. All right. Well, ladies, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at GinaKDesigns.com, and I will get those right out to you. Well, this was so much fun, everybody. I had a great time tonight, and I hope you guys did too. And I hope you'll look at your stencils in a different way and see how you can use them to stencil a silhouette. And then, of course, we love stamping in silhouettes. We we'll always love that. So, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see what you make. Share it over in our group, Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. We would love to have you in our group. It's a private group. You can join. You do have to answer some questions, though, first and agree to our rules. That's just to make sure we keep the uh, the trolls out and um, share your artwork over there with us. And I'll be posting high quality photos of these cards here on YouTube, also in our Facebook group later. So you can take a look at the ink blending a little bit more up close. All right, everybody. Well, Tom and I'll be back on Tuesday with another Crafter Noon Stampin' Chat Live. And then I will try to get a weekend card out for you. We'll see how it goes. The kids come home from the Philippines. So we'll see if I have time. I certainly will give it my best effort. In the meantime, everybody stay safe and healthy. We love you so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.